seems like, you know, shutting down this uh, tournament, you know, the, the, the and, and um, Sam was saying that uh, thing he was going to in Vegas next week is canceled, can't go. Um, just all these things that, you know, and, and Sam was saying that, who, who'd you say said there was a case in uh, – Let's see people say all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, so. there was a case in Waynesboro. Yeah. There's a guy sheets in Waynesboro. Oh, wow. But, you know, I mean, if that happens, and it's probably going to happen, um, your, your, your chances to survive is still really, really pretty good. Um, I'd say the odds that you even contract it is pretty, um, uh, it's, it's pretty astronomical. But even if you do, you have like a 98% chance that you're not going to die. So I'm, I'm not sure. Like, like like I told you earlier, maybe I'm just completely underreacting. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to get this thing uh, out there. Oh, okay, I'm yeah, we're try to share this thing. So, Just follow the money trail because there's always one. Somebody's going to benefit from you fearing. <laughs> I mean, there's what Costco and Walmart running out of toilet paper. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that's my biggest concern. I sure don't sanitizer. want that happening. Hand sanitizer. I mean, <laughs> hand sanitizer is bad enough, but I mean, you got soap, you can do, but um, I don't want to run out of toilet paper. I'm not trying to get on some paper towels. Mm. Um, that's just crazy. Yeah. But, yeah, somebody told me, somebody I talked to today, uh, a guy from our church, uh, he went to Costco, and Costco was literally out of toilet paper. Uh-huh. And, and at Food Line here, they weren't out, but there was chunks. The, 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 the kind I usually get was gone. It's never happened. Um, okay. Well, this ought to. We got twenty one already. <laughs> Seven was well, seventeen. I just it just dropped back to seventeen. Um, this might get some attraction. I would hope. I put tonight's topics: coronavirus, transgenderism, MAGA, Lent. Who knows what else? I mean, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, but I just think I deleted that. <laughs> I have to do start it again. again. <laughs> All right, I gotta concentrate here for a second. <laughs> All right, and then we'll get actually started. Uh, let's see, tonight's topics. Of course, I don't know what order we'll end up doing them, but try to cover them all. Okay. I didn't mean, or I didn't know, I don't know the difference of starting a watch party. That's not really what I was trying to. I did that before. It's a little different. I mean, I I usually can't see the simple truth thing anymore because the the watch party is a little different. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. We'll we'll see. Gets different people. Yeah. Than what we have. Yeah. John Lucas is watching. John Lucas and, and I saw Frank um, Pad Pasdrick, Frank, Dakota yes. Price, yes. Giovanni Crash Castro, yes, all good, good, good folks. Twenty eight. Um, our numbers have been climbing pretty good. Uh, all right, so we'll get started here in in, in thirty seconds. Uh, this is important, folks. We got to some find ways to invite everybody. So. It just takes an extra minute or two. You can help us by sharing this, by the way. Um, we are kind of covering hot topics tonight is, is the main focus. 
but certainly we want to bring um, biblical truth into it. So just understand that it's not a Bible study tonight, but it's it's a discussion on things that are important to address from a Christian worldview and a yeah. biblical worldview. And if we're going to do the one on Lent Ash Wednesday type stuff, might want to do that one last uh, yeah, further sure. down since since that to be the time the time of year for the although Lent is forty days prior. Sounds but, good to me. Uh, those things are 40 days prior, but closer to Easter. Eric, Andy Morris. Okay. Well, I, I think we're ready to go. Um, so we're not on the screen, Sam, if that makes a difference or not. The time is on the screen, but it's just the blank uh, background right now. But now I see that. Small, but yeah. Okay. All right. So, hey, if you're watching, say hi. I see Kelly Rosario says hi. Okay. Sometimes we don't, uh, we don't quite, Terrence and I don't think, we don't see the same things on our screen, but which is no problem. Like I don't see the um, same tell me who's on there that yours does. But it's always that way. Yeah. It seems like. Uh, I'm going to look at this other thing for a second, too. I'm going to see what uh, – um, no, that's not it. The watch party. All right, Mark Schoolcraft. So so when I'm on the watch party, I can see that, but I couldn't yeah. see it over there. So oh. I'll watch for he, on, on here, and you watch I'll watch here. from the other one. Yeah, we'll yeah. see how that goes. So. I don't know how to um, invite groups and stuff, but that's all right. All right, I think we are, yes. We'll see. All right. Yeah. Welcome to Simple Truth, a weekly broadcast dedicated to the exhortation and equipping of the body of Christ. And now, here's Pastor Terrence Williams and Pastor Mark Wingfield. All right. Hello, everyone. I am Mark Wingfield, pastor of First Baptist Church of Grottoes, Virginia, and I'm here with Pastor Terrence Williams, also of First Baptist Church, Grottoes, Virginia, and Sam King, who is the producer of our show. And our show is Simple Truth Radio, and we are a ministry that airs on WBTX Radio every weekend. Thank you, by the way, to Mike Jarrett and the group at Jarrett Towing and Auto Recovery in Grottoes. They are um, the sponsors for us, the paid corporate sponsors for that show. And uh, we're also thankful for those of you listening to us right now on WBTX. We also air um, about once a month when we record our sessions on uh, Facebook Live. You can, uh, you can watch the live stream and you can comment and join us and be part of that. And then uh, you can also go to our Facebook page and find archived episodes and watch them that way as well. In fact, a lot of times I think later in the evening after we're done tonight recording, other people will jump in and watch. And, and sometimes I think they think that we're still live and I see them <laughs> saying hi to us. And of course we're done. And, but I've done that on other people's stuff as well. So um, anyway, hey, we're glad that you guys are with us and we are going to get started. Terrence, are you ready to get started? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, Terrence and I um, uh, talked some this afternoon, tried to decide some of the things that we thought we wanted to address. And, and one of the things that we thought would probably be very timely, something that we ought to talk about, is the coronavirus that, uh, that everyone is talking about right now. And, um, you know, I don't know, Terrence, where, where you stand on this, but, but the first observation, I'll just make an observation about this, is that... Some people seem to have no concern over the coronavirus whatsoever, while others uh, are, are reacting. Uh, I won't use the word overreacting. Um, I'll say, though, that um, some are, are, are reacting, uh, uh, taking this very seriously, I guess. And so um, I guess I'll just throw out to you, first of all, and let you run with it whichever direction you want. How, uh, how, how, how do you respond to what's going on right now with this virus? Um. As in anything, and I mean, you know, 
I've posted it on my Facebook page, and some people may have seen it. Uh, ever since, uh, gosh, we can just go back to 2000, and there's usually been every year there's been some kind of scare. I mean, Y2K, mm. uh, SARS, H1N1, uh, uh, and, and every year there's something. So, I mean, basically, you know, I believe in using precautions, you know, obviously walking in wisdom, uh, you know, wash your hands. I mean, you should do that anyway, not just when there's a scare. Uh, you should wash your hands. I mean, uh, you should be sanitary. Um, so that's not, that's something that really shouldn't be a new, a new development. But, uh, in terms of us that, um, that walk with the Lord, um, we, uh, we've got to put our trust in the Lord and not, uh, be caught up into some of the irrational fear that's out there. I mean, we've got grocery stores that are out of hand sanitizer that are out of toilet paper. I can imagine there'll be <laughs> price gouging going on, maybe on eBay and different places. Oh, Amazon's already yeah. doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, we, you know, we've as 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 children of God, you know, and, and with our trust in the in the Lord, you know, we 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 are representing a God who tells us to fear not in so many different <laughs> places in the Bible. Uh, again, wisdom is in the order, but irrational fear is never in the order for a believer, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at just one passage of Scripture. Um, Psalm 91. Uh, Psalm 91. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, uh, I have a memory of Psalm 91. Right after 9-11, so almost 20 years ago now 9-11 was, mm-hmm. uh, my pastor, who was brand new to the church, um, preached uh, his message on Psalm 91. And I was still a very young Christian at that time, but it, um, it certainly um, it comforted me. And it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, which are feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield. And a buckler. Um, you can see there are different um, uh, pictures that were given here um, to uh, describe God, and, and, and that's poetic language. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Maybe we could add, or the or virus that uh, everybody on TV is, is trying to get us in a panic over. Yes. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will um, command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The last three verses, of course, are being spoken to from God's perspective. Hey, you know what? Um, there are a lot of promises in there. We don't have time to, um, mm-hmm. to unfold each one. Um, and certainly if we were to preach this, either one of us, I think we would probably both say that this is not to say that God is obligated to make sure that we never get sick or that we never have something bad happen to us. Some of the language here, of course, almost uh, does imply that, but we have to remember that this is poetic language. And it's also the point of this, of course, is for us to understand that whatever we're up against, whatever the Lord allows to come against us, it is in him whom we trust. Exactly. That is the the the, the whole <clears throat> point uh, or the, the lesson, I guess, that we're to learn. That is the reason that God gave us this psalm is to remind us that he is our refuge. He is the one who um, I will call out to and trust in my time of need. And I, I think that some people... Um, need to to read that psalm very carefully and uh, and let it be applied to this fear they have that perhaps their children or someone older in their family or even themselves might catch this this virus, which by the way, statistically, uh, the odds are greatly in your favor. Um, and then even uh, if you did catch it, get uh, awfully sick and perhaps die. And again, um, statistically, the odds are in your favor. And that's beside the fact that God has said he's watching over us. Yes.
What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, again, we, you know, our, have faith in God. Um, not necessarily uh, because we can, we, can, we can tear through the Bible and find lots of promises and, and totally throw out the context of what's going on in, the, in, the, in that passage and just, you know, proclaim all of those things for us. Uh, uh, and put ourselves, inject ourselves into the scripture in every point, and, and, and lots of people do that. Um, we need to recognize the fact that God is for us. Our, we're, we are forging a relationship with him through faith, mm. and uh, uh, it is appointed unto man, all men, wants to die. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't say how, it was gonna, how you were going to die. Uh, but the thing is, there's no fear in death any longer. Death, where's their sting? Uh, grave, where is your victory? Ooh, I mean, we we have we serve a risen Savior, and death is nothing any any is nothing but just a a path a pathway for us to enter into eternity, where we'll be with Him forever. Uh, so mm. there should be no fear in death. And not saying again, as, as I said before, we're going to walk in wisdom. I mean, we're not you right. know. If we're you're not inviting, we're not going to invite, you know, death. Mm-hmm. We're not going to act in in ignorance uh, that there are things going on in the world, pestilences. But this isn't the first thing to come down the the come, come down the road that we've had to deal with. Like I said, all, uh, all the different things that have come through, and and make sure you know you who are listening, make sure that 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 the that the media and that all these different things don't pull on your pull on you so much to get you fearing things that mm. you de- that you depart from your, the peace of God that God wants to give you in the midst of this and realize that you know I mean there's money to be made through fear there's uh, things to be sold through fear I mean I think it was Jim Baker that was selling all these doomsday packs where freeze dried food and all this well, different hey, you stuff. Sent me that, um, that, that I guess it was a pastor selling some sort of coronavirus um, um, uh, anointing or something. So I mean, I mean, don't be prey for people. Don't be merchandised by people, uh, but realize, put your trust in the Lord and realize that, you know, he'll get you through this, mm-hmm. this scare. And I'm sure in 2021, there'll be a, a brand new one oh, waiting for us to are. deal That's with. Right. Sam is um, James King, your dad. Okay, I saw that comment. Hey, hey, James. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, so, so all you're saying is uh, is right on online. On um, you know, Romans eight uh, says, "What shall we say to these things?" Um, and, and and of course, it's talking about our salvation and yes. the fact that we were predestined, we were called um, as children of God. It says, "If God is for us, who can be against us?" You know, that's a that's a good question. If God is for us, who can be against us? Um, you know, and, and God in completely in God's uh, power and in his, his control and in his sovereignty and his uh, mightiness to keep any of this from touching any of us. If that is God's will, if it's God's will that this um, uh, virus doesn't touch a single one of us, then it will not. Um, and if it does, then we have to understand that uh, that is part of God's will and that there is a reason for it. But anyway, if he is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? And, and I, I'd say that there are times like this when some people's, um, I guess their faith is put to the test. Uh, mm-hmm. We find out what your faith is really in. Is your faith in God and his providence and his goodness, or is it in a circumstance? And again, I don't think we really have anything right now to fear at all. Um, and I will stress that, and, and if that changes, I'll be sure to let you know, but I don't think we have anything that we need to fear right now, and again, Terrence is right, we walk in wisdom, um, but even if something would beset any of us, and you know, I am certain that uh, some of the people who have contracted this already are Christians, and even possibly some who have died, don't know a single thing about any of them other than they were all over 65, but other than, and talking about the United States, um, but again, I don't know that there aren't Christians that God has allowed this, happen, but, but it's to his glory and he has a reason. Uh, finish this up here. We've got about a minute and a half to finish. Well, uh, again, you know, it says here, uh, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, angels or principalities mm-hmm. or powers, Still in or Romans things 8. present or things to come, height nor depth, any other created thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ. So, I mean, uh, my eternity secure, that was, 
probably the thing that most of us would be more anxious about. Uh, if you're anxious about a whole lot of things on this earth, I would say uh, I'd worry more about eternity. Make sure eternity mm-hmm. is secure. Make sure you're ready. Uh, make sure you're ready to meet God. Um, and just realize that, you know, once you've got that covenant with God, that he's for you, he's not against you. And no matter what happens to you in this life, because we're all going to pass away, uh, we're going to be with him forever. Wow, oh, amen. You know, that is the most important thing anybody listening um, could ever have um, happen in their lives, and that is to be forgiven by God and to be um, put in right standing with Him, and that happens only through the blood of Christ. Remember, for uh, for our sake, um, that He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God. That's Second Corinthians um, five, and and listen, that's it. If you've got uh, God's righteousness um, applied to you, uh, if you have right standing with God, then you have everything, uh, virus or no virus. So anyway, that's it for this session of uh, Simple Truth Radio. Um, I'm Mark with Terrence and Sam. Those of you listening live, stay tuned. We're not done. Thank you for listening to Simple Truth. We look forward to bringing you new messages each week. Tune in next week as we hear from Mark Wingfield and Terrence Williams. Hurt to eat only clean foods. Also not a coincidence that the areas heavily hit eat pork and shellfish. Don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're still on, aren't we? Yes. Okay. Good. Good. We uh, we enjoyed some of that interaction with you guys, and uh, we look forward to some more. And um, I think we're going to go ahead and and shift gears and uh, talk a little politics, which we usually do at least one segment um, uh, per evening. And a lot of what we say is that, uh, that, that politics can be important, but that they are not of ultimate importance. No. Um, but the reason we have to keep addressing it, I think, is simply because right now, being in an election year, in a presidential election year, um, it is, uh, it's all over the place. And, 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 and both Terrence and I find things on Facebook that concern us at times um, <laughs> that, uh, that we, we feel, you know, feel strongly about and also also want to say what we say in respectful ways. Um, uh, well, maybe even better said in helpful ways. We want to help. Uh, that's the whole purpose. It's not to simply get to talk for 15 minutes about something we want to talk about. We, we want to say it in such a way that blesses people. So hopefully we'll do that. You know, you guys can be praying for us as we talk, you know, because um, this is live, man, and it's not scripted. And, you know, as the conversation goes, the conversation goes. Yeah. And we never quite know where we're going to end up or what direction we're headed, but um, but we do want to do so in a way that honors God. So, all right, let's go ahead and start our second session now. Welcome to Simple Truth, a weekly broadcast dedicated to the exhortation and equipping of the body of Christ. And now, here's Pastor Terrence Williams and Pastor... Welcome to Simple Truth, a weekly broadcast dedicated to the exhortation and equipping of the body of Christ. And now, here's Pastor Terrence Williams and Pastor Mark Wingfield. Hello, everyone. I am Mark Wingfield, the pastor of First Baptist Church of Grottoes, Virginia, and I'm here with Pastor Terrence Williams and Sam King, and we are Simple Truth Radio. And we first of all want to say thank you to all of you who are listening on a Saturday or Sunday morning on WBTX Radio. We want to thank Mike Jarrett and Jarrett Towing and Auto Recovery for their continued sponsorship of our um, ministry. We want to say hi to Mike Adams and to Bill McCaskill if they're listening and tell them how much we appreciate the, uh, well, really the the show started because they, along with Sam King, had a, um, a, a desire given to them from God for this radio ministry. And, and of course, both of them have supported us over the years in different ways. Most recently, Mike Adams has supported us um, along with Rob Shirley with their uh, men's call, um, which is a uh, 
uh, a Saturday morning weekly call, Saturday mornings at 8 o'clock. And if you go to, I believe it's when, uh, just men's call doc, themenscall.com, you can find information there. And if you're watching live, Sam, just put it on the screen. Thank you, Sam. All right. Uh, so it is a presidential election year. And with that comes all kinds of fun. Um, we are actually recording this today, which is March 10th. 10. And, oh, it's on the screen. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> March 10th. And, um, uh, and so today, even as we are, are recording this, I guess results are probably pouring in from several states that had their primaries today. I have no idea um, where anyone placed or finished and really don't care at the moment. But, uh, but, but that's what's on people's minds. And so mm-hmm. um, Terrence and I were talking earlier uh, this week and, um, and, and, and just the concern, you know, the thing is that, that politics um, aren't bad. And in fact, I would say God cares about politics because God cares about every part of our lives. Um, but politics aren't king uh, or president or, or whatever uh, you want to say. Politics um, are a secondary part of our lives mm-hmm. That, um, that cannot compare to the main call in our lives, and that is building the kingdom of God. Yes. So speak to that, Terrence. Well, I mean, that's right. Uh, in amongst one of the, some of the topics that is probably weighs the most on my heart is that uh, our original commission given by Christ was to go into all the world and preach the gospel to the poor, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and... Uh, discipling all nations. Uh, that's, that's our, that's our, that's called the great commission. That's what we've been commissioned to do. And a, mm. a commissioning is something that you are mandated. Uh, it's a job, it's a, a role that you've been mandated to do. And so anything in terms of building a nation, uh, is secondary. Uh, how do we make America great again? Let's get as many people saved and their perspectives changed uh, to live and demonstrate the kingdom of God. And that's how we change Mm. cities. We change cities by changing neighborhoods. We change neighborhoods by changing homes. We change homes by changing husbands and wives and children. So, I mean, really, how do you change it? How do you change the, the, the destiny? How do you change the direction of a nation? It starts with changing the, the human heart. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm with you, and we talk about this at times, but um, one of the concerns that both of us have had is the uh, almost the, the worship of a candidate um, or of a political party. Um, while it's not completely connected, this my thoughts just went to Acts chapter 14, the story where Paul and Barnabas heal a, uh, a crippled man, and then the people there start calling uh, Barnabas Zeus, and Paul uh, Hermes, and remember, they begin to worship them and fall at their feet, and, and Paul scolds them and says, why are you doing these things? We're also men. In fact, we're just here to bring you good news, and you should turn for these things to the living God. Well, you know, Paul and, and, and Barnabas were doing good things, um, but the people were incorrect in, in, in worshiping them. Well, you know, we want politicians that get it done, whatever it is. I, I know that there are certain issues that are very precious to, to different people. Um, for a lot of us evangelical Christians, the uh, abortion, um, uh, you know, the abortion issue is the big one. But right now there's there's gun control and there's immigration and there are all kinds of topics. But listen, not one person um, is going to, uh, uh, you know, bring revival to our land. And as Christians, that was what we want more than anything. Exactly. We certainly don't uh, deify them and, and say that, you know, they're finally, we have some hope because, Donald Trump is president or, uh, or whoever it might be. Um, we just simply, uh, we're, we're called to be ambassadors for Christ. And I think maybe along with that comes making wise choices in voting. But honestly, um, what we are commissioned to do, just like you said, uh, is to spread the gospel and, um, and, and help build the kingdom. And that means making disciples uh, which, of course, also includes reaching lost people for Christ, but even just within the church, just building people into uh, better disciples. And that has nothing to do with political affiliation or candidate support. Exactly. Um, some of the things, one of the things, and I know you saw this, that kind of concerns me, and I think it was something, I think it might have been something Franklin Graham even said, that, you know, talking about Christians oh, getting yes. out to vote, if you don't vote, you know, we're going to lo- right. lose the country. Mm-hmm. It's all over. Mm-hmm. And... Um, 
that kind of fear mongering, uh, even though it's said spiritually, I mean, I guess you can <laughs> cloak it in spiritual language and call it whatever you want, but it's to me, it's fear mongering. Uh, we made it through uh, eight years of President Obama. We made it through Jimmy Carter. We made it through Clinton. We made it through, you know, all these other presidents, mm-hmm. and we didn't lose. We didn't, lo- yeah, two Bushes, and we didn't lose the country. And I'm, you know, I'm not saying that there are things, there aren't things that are concerning us that are coming to coming coming down the pike. And yes, you definitely need to exercise your right to vote. But again, just as we talked about last week about the coronavirus do not succumb to fear our trust is in god our trust is in our trust is in him to 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 look out for us and that is ultimately uh who's going to look out for us who's going to protect us who's going to to meet our needs and it's not it's not in a candidate it's in it's in who's on the who's on the throne of our lives yeah, you know, uh, as you speak, it, it kind of brings me to one of your favorite chapters in the Bible, uh, as well as mine, First Peter 2. And, you know, in First Peter 2, uh, Peter is speaking to Christians who are under heavy curse persecution um, at probably the outset of even a heavier persecution to come from the Roman Empire. Um, and he says, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passion of the flesh, which war against your soul. Uh, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good do- deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Um, you know, we're reminded that uh, that this is not our kingdom. This isn't our world. Um, while we're living in it, that's not what we live for. I know we've said this before. This is nothing new. But, but it's important to understand that we are foreigners in a foreign land. That's what we are told by God. Um, our allegiance is always to the kingdom of God first. It's nothing wrong with being uh, having the allegiance to your country, but that can't be first and foremost. Um, and honestly, what we're told here is that we're supposed to act in a different way than the rest of the world, and, and that's in every area, but that includes in how um, we hold up politics. There are people that I know, people that are uh, not born again, and politics is about all they've got right now. I mean, that is the most important thing to them, um, and uh, uh, they, they either love Trump or they hate him, um, but, uh, but boy, their, their whole day is, is, is either made or ruined based on what they see in the first 10 minutes of their news program. That's not the way I'm going to live. That's not the no. way we're called to live. And so, um, you know, what, what is it you, you, that, that, that phrase, make America great again? Um, sometimes, uh, you know, in one way, it's just a slogan. It's just a campaign phrase. Mm-hmm. All of them have it. What was Obama's? You know, we can do this or uh, let's, something. Yes, through. we can. Yes, we can. You know, I mean, it's just a catchy, uh, make America great again. Sounds, sounds um, uh, very catchy, but, but it really ruffles some feathers. What is it about that phrase, you think? That gets people. Well, I I hear from some people, you know, when, when was America great for everyone? Yeah, and I'm asking uh, you this to speak as a black man who okay. who doesn't uh, care to to do the race thing. Well, you but know, at the same time, let's let's as be a black honest, man. Is, in fairness, you know, I mean, the the '60s and 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 you know, obviously slavery, but also Jim Crow and all those different things. There were mm-hmm. different times in history that was not uh, great for all Americans. Mm-hmm. Uh, could be the Indians mm-hmm. with the Trail of Tears and. And, uh, you know, just a lot of disenfranchised people in the country. So, I mean, I can see where that touches a nerve. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, you know, as a, as a born again uh, black man, mm-hmm. uh, I, I am now part of an, another kingdom, uh, one that's coming. I'm no longer of this world, like Jesus Ooh. told uh, yeah. Pilate, you know, that my kingdom's not of this world. Yeah. Uh, we are not of this world any longer, and we can't afford to be uh, caught up in the fray and pulled t- uh, to and fro in all this polarization that goes on. It's it's all to divide us. It's all to pit us one against another. And and I'm sad to say that I see it just as much in, in the Christian, in the church as I do in the lost world with people on social media and, mm. and in different platforms. Mm. So, I mean, you well, know. Well, it's too bad. That's too bad. But, you know, the reason I, I wanted you to speak was just because sometimes we do need to remember that that uh, Make America Great Again um, is a loaded uh, slogan. Um, but at the end of the day, um, man, you hit it. The thing is that, um, that we have our identity now in Christ. And see, again, those Christians that might be listening, um, and, and, and when they hear that slogan or phrase, it, it gets them fired up one way or another. Um, folks, that's not what we live for. Um, you know, quote Bible verses. 
uh, not make America great again, you know, uh, learn the, 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 um, the things of God, um, uh, know those things better than you know the issues, the political issues. I'm, I'm glad that my teenage sons, uh, both of them, but especially my older one, uh, has taken an interest in politics. I think that's good. I think that um, he can speak intelligently to issues, and in fact, he knows more about some issues than I do. But if that's what he knows more than anything else, if he knows politics more than he knows the Lord, then I have failed. And, uh, you know, so that's coming from a parent. And as a Christian, um, if, again, the thing that gets me um, uh, the most emotional and passionate is, uh, is standing for a cause, again, whether it be, you know, you're not taking our guns from us uh, or, uh, you know, we've got to get the baby killers out of the, uh, you know, the White House or, or whatever it might be, mm-hmm. how, whatever angle, you know, the, certainly with the governor of Virginia um, and some of those issues. But that's not, uh, that's not what I'm, I'm, I'm here to live for. Um, right. That's not what I'm called to right. live for. So go ahead and finish this up. I did see somebody just said that he was listening and the Internet's messing up, but I think that's at uh, his house. So. Well, I mean, again, you know, our mandate is, is greater than uh, an earthly land. You know, we're, we're not nationalists. We're kingdom, mm. you know, we're kingdom-minded yes. people. Uh, we just happen to live in America, and of course, we want the land that we live in to be blessed. But we also want it to be godly. And my 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 advice to anyone, you know, be involved in politics. You can, you can get talk about it. You can think about it. All those different things. But the most important thing you need to do is to make sure that the Bible is where your where your worldview comes from. That that is the lens that you look at everything in this earth through is the Word of God, the the, the Word of God, and the voice of the Holy Spirit and make sure that you uh, are looking at your world through that parameter and not through what the world uh, is trying to instruct you to see. And, and that way you can, you definitely can guard yourself against, against those things. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, uh, Terrence. And Hey, thank you all who are listening. Uh, we're making sure that everybody is good on the uh, video feed. And I don't think it was an isolated incident with one of our listeners, but uh, anyway, uh, Mark, Terrence and Sam for Simple Truth Radio. That is it for this segment of Simple Truth Radio. Those of you who are listening live, stick around. We're not finished. And those of you on WBTX, come back next week for Simple Truth Radio. Thank you for listening to Simple Truth. We look forward to bringing you new messages each week. Tune in next week as we hear from Mark Wingfield and Terrence Williams. Um, so uh, I, I think it was uh, it was a problem with his particular feed, not, yeah. not on here. So, all right, let's uh, let's let's go to the. To the D Wade and the oh, and the, oh, and the whole okay. fun bunch there, um, <laughs> and uh, so hmm. all right. Just got a text from my son Atticus, and he was texting me back and forth, making jokes about a couple of the Democratic candidates. And uh, that's my boy. So <laughs> not bad. It wasn't malicious. It was just funny. <laughs> we we joke about all of them uh, at our house. So. We're equal opportunists. So, honestly, most politicians um, probably lend themselves to a little bit of good humored um, uh, back and forth. Welcome to Simple Truth, a weekly broadcast dedicated to the exhortation and equipping of the body of Christ. And now, here's Pastor Terrence Williams and Pastor Mark Wingfield. Sometime, I guess, get a commercial going again for uh, Jared. Sometime. I don't know if we have one anymore, but. Yeah, yeah. Maybe between the next segments. Okay. Welcome to Simple Truth, a weekly broadcast dedicated to the exhortation and equipping of the body of Christ. And now, here's Pastor Terrence Williams and Pastor Mark Wingfield. Hello, everyone. I am Mark Wingfield, the pastor of First Baptist Church of Grottoes, Virginia, here with Pastor Terrence Williams and Sam King, who produces our show, and our show is Simple Truth Radio. And we're so glad that you have chosen to join us. Uh, Some of you are here with us tonight. 
as we record this live. You are part of the Facebook live stream, and we're so thankful for that. And some of you are listening to back uh, 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 episodes of the show on the Facebook page for Simple Truth Radio or on the uh, website as well. And then some of you are listening right now on a Sunday morning or perhaps a Saturday morning on local radio station WBTX. And so... Uh, uh, and so anyway, however you're listening, we're thankful. And we're thankful for Mike Jarrett and Jarrett Towing and Auto Recovery for being a corporate sponsor. Um, we, uh, we encourage all of our listeners to support those who sponsor our show. So, uh, so, so Terrence, I'm, I'm going to just swing right on into the topic. Um, uh, you know, when we talk about things in the Bible that are an abomination... Um, if I was to, 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 to ask you to name several things to me that, that the Lord calls an abomination, um, most people would start with uh, homosexuality. That's, that's the one that seems like everybody knows. But, mm -hmm. but there are many other things. Uh, um, people who cause dissension within the body, a lying tongue, um, you know, uh, those that kill innocent uh, mm -hmm. lives. All that's in Proverbs 6. And, and here's one for you. Um, Deuteronomy 22.5 says this, A woman shall not wear a man's garment, nor shall a man put on a woman's cloak. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord your God. Now, that's pretty hardcore, uh, <laughs> you know, and that seems just real unnecessary, doesn't it? And I mean, why in the world do we need these verses that say that a man shouldn't dress like a woman or a woman dress like a man. And, and yet, if you, if you dig in Scripture, you'll find other passages. Some of it's subtle. Uh, I just preached a couple weeks ago from 1 Corinthians 11 that talked about uh, the natural head coverings of a man and a woman. And in it, it says that even nature itself uh, says that the woman's hair should be long, and her covering should be long, and the man should be short. Because naturally, God has made us differently. Men mm -hmm. are made differently than women. So, if you can't tell where we're going here, um, you know, we, we've we seen a lot in the last week about Dwayne Wade and who's his wife? Gabrielle. Gabrielle Union. Union mm -hmm. And their child. Zion. Who, who is a girl. It's a guy, a boy. It's and a boy who he's says going he's to a girl, become a, a girl. Okay, yes. so it's that. I, I couldn't yeah. remember. Yeah, Zion is the son. He's 12 years old, and he's going to change his name to Zaya. Okay. So I wasn't sure if it was yeah. Zaya mm -hmm. changing. The, okay. So mm -hmm. anyway, and I'm not trying to make light of it right. um, because, uh, you know, these are real people. These are real lives. These are real issues. But listen, we're here tonight to talk about these issues biblically. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, um, and, and so, and by the way, if, if the only thing that we had to go by was the Old Testament, one verse in Deuteronomy, well, we probably wouldn't be talking about it as much. But, but folks, um, whether you're talking about God's, uh, this, uh, what he says about homosexuality, and you want to tie some of that in because it is inter interconnected, even though it's not one and the same, or if you want to just simply go by the fact Jesus himself quoted Genesis when he said, hey, you know, God made them man and he made them woman. God is the one that created. So, so anyway, tell us a little bit more about this uh, this family dynamic. Uh, well, you and know what the problem is. Uh, I think uh, Zion was uh, a product of a prior relationship before uh, Dwayne and Gabrielle married, and uh, Zaya uh, started uh, feeling like he uh, was he wanted to come out at the age of twelve and said that he had back as far back as the age of three or four he felt like he was supposed to be a girl when he actually he is a boy. And uh, so they've made the decision that they're going to allow him to uh, even surgically alter his body uh, at the age of 12 years old. 12 He's allowed them to make that decision. Wow. And, uh, you know, um, you know, that's, and, that's tragic. Oh gosh. And the media at least certain media, is celebrating this again. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that a couple years ago, uh, what's the, the, the woman's name? Charlize Theron, I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, actress, same kind of thing. I think she has two little boys that she dresses up in, in dresses or something. And, mm -hmm. and listen, there are probably some people that think that that's just fine. And, and in fact, Seems like there's a lot of people that think that's fine um, if you believe, uh, again, what the media wants us to believe. But God, 
God made boys, boys, men, men, girls, girls, women, women. And there's, it, it, to try to go against that natural, the natural order that God himself brought into existence. Um, well, scripture says it's an abomination. Yeah. Yeah. What else uh, you want to speak to? Uh, it's just, uh, it just seems like it's the agenda is to, to blur the lines. I mean, mm. uh, where we you know we can see Cosmo with a guy you know in a dress uh modeling that and 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 you know you can see it in fashion you know men's men's clothes are getting tighter and more form fitting yeah who uh, is that guy um Porter uh Mike uh who Billy is, Porter yeah who is that guy like um, I feel like I'm supposed to know on who that Sesame person. Street the guy that's going to be on Sesame we'll Street I, I that he know. wears a dress yeah what's the deal yeah. with him I mean, um He's he's gay. I mean, and is he famous before this? Is he um, somebody I should have known? Some something in arts and entertainment. And okay. see, and, and see, I think I think the uh, the thing that should be even more concerning to us, Mark, is that um, we have these agendas being pushed by celebrities, and since we're such a celebrity driven culture, right, who cares what they say? Um, we should have that. You know, I mean, right? it started. You know, we Bruce Jenner becomes Caitlyn Jenner, and um, you know it becomes worldwide news because here's this former Olympic decathlete, uh, decathlon winner, uh, that has said that he's going to be a, a male. Right. And I you're mean, not a female, allowed to speak out against that. But yet the, the craziness about it is that he said he's still attracted to women. Uh, and, uh, he's, you know, he hasn't surgically altered anything. He's just wearing women's clothing. So, I mean, but the thing is, the, the agenda is, is this, we can get these idols that we have since we're such an idol driven nation to, uh, to put forth these agendas. I mean, Dwayne Wade's well known, Gabrielle Union, well known. And so they will get a following based on who they are, uh, being, uh, in Hollywood and, and a former NBA bo- uh, basketball player. And so, I mean, that, that's what's concerning. And it's out there. Uh, you know, I saw today on Facebook a, a friend of mine um, had posted, uh, I think she's a librarian, and she had posted a book that was in their library um, that was the uh, told from the perspective of somebody who didn't claim to be male or female, and she was talking about how refreshing that was and how encouraging it was to hear another voice. And uh, about a month ago, um, I, I saw a post on Facebook that just, just, I don't even know what to do with. And, and it was a girl that was just celebrating the bathrooms, of course, the, to the, you know, the, the by gender bathrooms or whatever you call it, mm-hmm. but also the fact that there were um, what have traditionally been called ladies products in that bathroom that were not labeled as ladies, but were <laughs> labeled for anybody. I don't even make my, 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 my mind won't even work to understand that kind of thing. Yeah. But that's where I guess we've gotten to. And, and, you know, so some people might say, well, what's the big deal if he wants to be a girl for a while? And, uh, she wants to be a boy for a while. Well, for one thing, we're not usually talking about just for a while. We're talking about some, 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 some serious something going on with that person that we are neglecting to address when we just simply say, well, that's normal for him. Yeah. Uh, that's normal for her. Um, or it, or whatever you call it. I don't even know what sometimes the, I'm not trying to be funny here. I mean, right. I, I don't really know sometimes. It's it's a rebellion against God. It's that, it's it is a rebellion exactly against what God. It is. It's, it's, you know, we, we are redefining normal so that future generations, are, we know that Satan, God is not the, the author of confusion. <laughs> but yet right. the enemy wants to inject as much confusion and gosh, you know, a 12 year old child, you know, I mean, he says that he knew at three that he wanted to be a girl. I mean, who, who knows that? I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out what crayon I'm going to draw with or, or what kind of little car or Tonka toy I want to play with, not what my sexuality is. So there's, there's a definite agenda that has been increased and pushed upon people to where you even have children having these thoughts and having these conversations at early ages when they're not, uh, they're not mentally prepared (laughs) to even know what that's talking about. I mean, what is it, what is it at 12 years old that you would be concerned, concerned about a sexual press preference anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. That's a great question. And again, you know, uh, for, for years now, of course, Hollywood's been part of it, but they're not the only 
for it. But I mean, again, the media in general, um, sexualizing the youth. And mm-hmm. then, uh, you know, th- there was a, a video that was popular a couple of years ago that, uh, that I used to, to tease my kids with because they didn't like it because it was a little girl dancing. But I didn't realize until that recently when I watched it again that, that there's a lot of sexual things going on there that I didn't even see. I, mm-hmm. I felt awful that I even let my kids see it because I missed it upon the first view. But, yeah. you know, again, it's all out there. Uh, John Lucas talks about uh, uh, Revelation 21, 7 through 8. And, you know, and I know a lot of people will say, well, you know, that Greek word pornea, that didn't specifically mean, well, what it specifically meant was everything that is outside mm-hmm. of God's plan right. for sex. And uh, the transgender, transgender issue is part of that as well. It says in the Bible that um, for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, which we've talked about, uh, all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. I mean, that's a reality. Um, God's wrath has come, it tells us in um, Romans chapter 1. God's wrath has come because of these things. Yes. And then John also makes reference to uh, Psalm, or excuse me, Ephesians 5, 1 through 12. And, uh, and there are a lot of things in there as well. But it talks about um, that uh, you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure uh, has no inheritance in the kingdom of of Christ and God, and it tells us that we shouldn't be partners with them, that we are to walk as children of light and take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. So, yes. hey, you know what? Some people are going to say that we are, uh, you know, uh, well, I don't know. They're, they're going to come up with names for us. I don't even want to give them fuel, um, no. but, but they're going to. But it says right here that we're not supposed to um, do anything but expose it. And well, that's we're, what we're, doing. we're commanded to train up a child in the way it should go. So ultimately God is, is looking at us as we are supposed to, we're, we're responsible for training them and, and presenting them to the world and, and, t- and telling them the truth. And when we uh, succumb to what culture is demanding, what, uh, and, and even what the child himself may say you know there needs to be a voice of reason there needs to be a voice of maturity the fact that god even blessed us to have that child in the first place mm-hmm. we're to guide them into That's all right. truth and man what a mandate that is being forfeited by so right. many in this nation and you know uh i'm going to be preaching on this some joey truxel this sunday what love really is uh you know it's uh, joey said that we need to make sure that we remember to love the sinner of course and hate the sin we, that is true um but remember that jesus uh jesus is god god is love he is the very definition of of, of, of love and Jesus spoke out very harshly at times against people and their sin. Um, yes, he loved them, um, but he didn't not expose it. And so we got to remember that there's a balance there that we uh, we have to do. Hey, you know what? We're out of time. Mark, Terrence, and Sam uh, for Simple Truth Radio. See you next time. Facebook Live. Thank you for listening to Simple Truth. We look forward to bringing you new messages each week. Tune in next week as we hear from Mark Wingfield and Terrence Williams. No, I got to be honest. Every time I hear that um, that phraseology, um, and, and you know, nothing. I'm not disagreeing with Joey at all. Oh, right, right. I'm but uh, you know, God's not going to send the sin of pornography to hell. He's going to send the pornographer to hell. Right. You know, the person committing the sin. The hell is hell is a real thing, and and. Um, do we do we love people by not telling them the truth, even if it's uh, truth? Truth, I don't care. I, the truth that saved me offended me at one point. <laughs> yes, and you were <laughs> glad greatly, for that now. Yes, yes. And, and so I mean, uh, 
when I hear turn, I, I got to be honest, when I hear, and I've heard it not just not just here, but I hear it a lot of times, whenever you start to speak boldly yeah. and speak about things, someone always wants to throw that out there. And I understand where it's coming from, but and, and if you, we, gotta, we have to be careful that we're not instructing people, okay, don't, don't speak the truth. Yes, and I would in say terms, this very – oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you said in terms of – In terms uh, – you, you don't – in in terms of speaking the truth, you know, a lot of times you, you hear that phraseology almost to, to back you down from saying what you're saying because it's a little bit too direct and, yeah. and it may hurt someone's feelings. And and I'll say this in love and respectfully um, because I do understand exactly what a person means when they say that. Um, but – we have to be careful that we don't say hate the sinner. I mean, hate the sin, love the sinner. And too often the people that like to say that, and I'm not talking specifically about anybody. So this isn't about Joey at all. I don't even know Joey's um, uh, right now, as far as like what goes on with him. Uh, although I think I saw you the other day, Joey, and I didn't say anything, but I think I saw you at uh, the book fair, but that's a topic for another time. Um, but, you know, we have to be careful that we don't say that all the time and then never, ever confront a sinner with their sin in love because that's exactly what you just said. That's love, too. You know, I would ask people that, that say that often, when's the last time that you even tried to, to, to bring somebody to Christ? I mean, I, I'm not, again, this is not about one person. I just mean in general what I find, you know, most Christians don't share their faith anyway. So um, let's be, be honest about that. That statistics show that. Um, but we have to be careful that we're not so afraid that we're going to hurt somebody's feelings or offend them that we just never speak the truth to them, I guess is what I'm getting at. And I have found almost 100% of the time that I've spoken to a person about their sin very specifically, and yes, sexual sin is probably the number one, I find, first of all, I don't do it unless I really feel the Lord leading me to do it, but I found that the person will receive it much better than we think they will. Now, that's not always true Mm -hmm. on Facebook. Um, it's not always true when I write an article in the newspaper or even when we do a show like this. Mm-hmm. But when you actually sit down with a person and you show them that you love them enough to talk to them about what the Bible says about their sin, they may not accept it and they may not agree with you, but I have found they will still have that conversation. Mm-hmm. And we as Christians have to be willing to have those conversations. And, you know, another thing, you know, we're not – if uh, I know, I'm pretty sure you feel the same way, Mark, but I've never, ever had to correct someone that I actually enjoyed doing it. <laughs> I didn't actually yeah, I look, I didn't that. actually look forward to, man, I can't yeah. wait to tell them what's on my mind. No, no. It's, there's a grieving that goes right. on because you, you want, first of all, you want the best for the person that is, is caught up in whatever the, it is that they're doing. Uh, and you're grieving over it you know, almost like, you know, Lord, do I really have to tell them? I really I, you know, anyone, I would say that anyone that's really looking forward to telling somebody, uh, giving somebody the business, you know, I would have to wonder where their, where their heart's coming from in the first place. Yeah. Cause I've never had to confront, confront someone that I was looking forward to it. I mean, even, I mean, I don't spank my kids. Look, I didn't spank my kids growing up looking forward to doing it. Uh, it's just, you know, correction is something you do because you love someone, not because you're trying to hurt them. And so, I mean, correction, the heart of correction always comes out of, out of God's love that it should be expressed through you to them. Yeah. And the first couple chapters of, uh, second Corinthians, Paul speaks to that as well, that, that he doesn't like having to cause them pain, um, and to, uh, to confront them in such a way. Um, however, um, I think it's the beginning of second Corinthians two. He says, for I made up my mind not to make another painful visit to you, for I, I caused you pain. Who is there to make me glad but the one whom I have pained? And as I wrote it, as I did, so that when I came, I might not suffer pain from those who should have made me rejoice, for I felt sure of all of you that my joy would be joy for you all. But for I wrote to you out of much affliction and anguish of heart, with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. Well, Paul was specifically talking about correcting them. 
And so he's saying, listen, I know that it's going to uh, cause some of you pain, mm-hmm. but I love you enough to do it anyway. And, uh, and so anyway, I think we have to have that attitude. So, yeah. All right, let's get to the last uh, segment here for the night. Thank you for those of you still listening on Facebook Live. Welcome to Simple Truth, a weekly broadcast dedicated to the exhortation and equipping of the body of Christ. And now, here's Pastor Terrence Williams and Pastor Mark Wingfield. Hello, everyone. I'm Mark Wingfield, the pastor of First Baptist Church of Grottoes, Virginia, here with Pastor Terrence Williams and Sam King, and we are Simple Truth Radio, and we are a radio program slash internet um, uh, ministry Facebook uh, program that, uh, that that talk about some of the hot topics and how the Bible can be um, applied to them, uh, how we are to to just really live with the Christian worldview. And so, uh, Terrence, it's good to be with you again. Amen. Great. We've Been had a, a um, we've recorded three shows tonight, and we've had some good interaction with folks. And I think uh, that uh, that we've had some good topics. Again, there's a lot of things going on, and uh, right now. We're right in the middle of, uh, of, of, of Lent, which is traditionally Catholic, but it's not only Catholic. I know I have an Anglican friend uh, who celebrates or, or observes Lent. Uh, I know that growing up, uh, really my only exposure to Lent, and, and I don't know much about Lent, um, but when I went to a, a Lutheran elementary school, uh, I know that we uh, observed Lent and I even remember a little bit about the Ash Wednesday and the ashes on the forehead. I, I don't remember anything specific about it anymore. But, but anyway, uh, so we're going to talk for a few minutes about Lent. Uh, might spill over to other observances. Not quite sure where we're going to go. Um, this will be one of these issues where you'll see Terrence and I agree and disagree a little bit. We we actually come to the same conclusion. Mm-hmm. And I guess I'll go ahead and, uh, and show our hand right now. <laughs> Neither Terrence nor I observe Lent, nor do we think that a person should. Maybe our reasoning for it might be a little bit different. I guess that's what I'm meaning, that we don't totally agree on the whole thing. But uh, uh, and yes, Matthew is already hitting Matthew six sixteen, and I'm or excuse me, Michael uh, Marcuson is. I think that you're hitting the passage where Jesus is commanding us how we are to fast, mm-hmm. and one of the things it says that we aren't to do so in a way that brings attention to us, and it even I believe it even says that we're to wash our face, um, something to that. We're supposed mm-hmm. to make ourselves look. Look uh, healthy. I think that that's probably where you are, right, mm-hmm. my, my, uh, Mike? Is, yeah, is that? I've got it over there, yeah. Yeah. So, because uh, mm-hmm. that's one of the passages I thought about bringing it up. There it is on the screen. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. Can you go to the next verse, Sam? Um, just because it's right there in front of me. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. Wow, I mean, that's pretty clear teaching from yeah. Jesus that it does seem the uh, the traditional practice of Lent, especially Ash Wednesday, when it comes to washing your face, might apply. T- tell me tell me your feelings on this, uh, Terrence. <laughs> we only got 10 minutes. Well, uh, you're going to have but, to do the fast yeah. version. Um, my concern has always been, you know, since the Reformation, since us uh, splitting from the Catholic Church, to see traditions that, are primarily rooted in in those in that in those thought in that thought still being observed and not really uh, fully understanding uh, why that is. If we've made if we are called pro- Protestants, which means we protested, okay. <laughs> which and, which and we had some issues. Yeah, and so um, you know, and you know, I dig. Me personally, I dig into a lot of the history and of what the symbols are and where they come from and uh, what they're rooted in, uh, maybe more so than uh, a lot of different people. And so, you know, going back to uh, 
Yeah, going back to Babylonian thought, you know, whether it be with Nimrod and his wife Samarimus and Tammuz, um, which is where a lot of this stuff really originated from with 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 them who uh and so knowing all that you know gives me a little bit of trouble as to why we would bring that into a new creation uh experience uh and and again i know some people that uh, observe it for different reasons uh and and maybe even have good excuses for doing it uh, and i mean you you who love new orleans i mean mm-hmm. uh, well, they, I don't go for Mardi Gras, they, they, but yeah, they, they yeah, love Mardi it down Gras, there. Mardi Gras, you know, the, the day called Fat Tuesday, basically mm-hmm. get get all of your yeah. indulgences in because you're going to start the fast on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. With, and, and that. That, that, that's, now, now you're hitting my <laughs> issue. See, while I really do find, um, I do find the, the, the history uh, of a lot of these holidays very interesting, and mm-hmm. I've learned a lot from you on it. I think I've just told you that still my view is more, what are we celebrating today? What does it mean to us now? And, mm-hmm. and I'm not as concerned. And, mm-hmm. and you can still speak to that, by the mm-hmm. way, in just a moment. But my concern with this particular one is just what you said. Mm-hmm. The whole idea, now, yes, Terrence is right. I and my wife, we love going to New Orleans. We love the food. We love the jazz. We love a lot of the history. But we don't go uh, during Mardi Gras, and we have nothing to do with that. And the idea that you would have um, uh, a week long, and really more than a week long, a time of just partying and indulging so that when Ash Wednesday hits, okay, now we stop it for 40 days. That's ridiculous to me. And and that really is what the whole um, idea, at least what a lot of people are doing for Lent, they're, they're giving something up. You know, I knew a guy, I liked the guy. He's a good guy. But, you know, he loses about 20 pounds during those 40 days because he stops drinking. Now, my thinking is he ought not be drinking like that during the rest of the year, and yet something is now, it, it doesn't seem like it's really about honoring Christ. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem, and, and I'm, I'm not speaking for everybody, because for some people maybe it does, but um, it seems like it's almost become just another, I don't know if the word is cultural, but it's not a, a Christian holiday. It's certainly not commanded in Scripture anyway. Right. And I do know, and, and one of my defenses sometimes for these things is that Colossians does tell us that we don't need to get caught up with all the uh, the, the tradition um, and the observance of the holidays. But really what, what that is probably addressing is just saying that Jesus has fulfilled some of those um, Old Testament holidays and observances that the people were mm-hmm. still celebrating. And it was just telling them, you're not commanded to do so anymore. You don't have to do it. Right. It wasn't really making the point that we can make up a bunch of other stuff and that it doesn't matter. Um, so I don't know. Keep talking. Well, and the great thing about it is, you know, Paul and Colossians and all those different. Paul, Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. So therefore, he was going into these places with all this the, all these pagan uh, rituals and pagan traditions and things that he was trying to illuminate them, you know, uh, about Christ. You know, the uh, the 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 one uh, portion of scripture where they were worshiping this unknown God and and, oh, yeah. and, and, and Paul and Paul basically preached Christ to them and said that this is actually who it is that you need to that you <laughs> that you need to be observing. Mm-hmm. So basically, I mean, what we're you know, what we're dealing with with we're talking about Lent and Ash Wednesday and all those different things. They're 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 traditions of men that we have we have a we have Christ. We have the greater uh, we have the greater example of it in Christ that we don't necessarily need to go back into things that maybe were started uh, started in other cultures, started uh, you know maybe even pagan roots to to a lot of them. Uh, and you know, of course, that can be argued. I mean, mm-hmm. where we talk about Lent and talking about Easter and talking about uh, uh, Ash Wednesday, you know, all those different things. Uh, we, you know, we have Christ. Uh, we have the greater thing. We don't need to go back to traditions. We have a living relationship with God that we don't necessarily need rituals. Although, you know, there's truth in the rituals. There's mm-hmm. things that can be reflected on in the rituals, but we need to have a living, breathing daily relationship with Christ, not a 40 day period. That's a good point. <laughs> but a 365 <laughs> yeah. day relationship. Yeah. That, that, well, that, that's it too. We are supposed to be, 
literally dying to self Yes. every day. That is supposed to be part of it. So in a sense, some of these things that maybe people are doing during Lent might be things that we ought to be doing every day anyway. Why in the world are we just setting out 40 out of 365 days to stop doing this or that? Yes. Um, you know, we should be self-examining every day. Mm-hmm. Um, we should be in the scripture, um, learning uh, more about the Lord and letting him show us things about ourselves every day. That should be part of, of what we do. And mm-hmm. it's not supposed to be just a, a time where, okay, well, I can't sin now for 40 days. I mean, and I don't know that sometimes people say, well, it's not about, you know, cutting out sin. Okay, well, whatever it is that you're cutting out, here's Another question, if it's not about cutting out sin, okay, well, why are you cutting out what you're cutting out then? If it's not sin, then, and I would even ask, well, what's the point? I mean, what are you trying to, to do? Do, do you think that, that God loves you more or, or that you're showing, um, uh, you know, greater, you know, disciple, uh, that you're a greater, deeper disciple? I, I don't know. It's just, it's a tough one. And and I don't think that it gives us the witness that, uh, that we're supposed to have. Yeah. And, um, you know, I would even say, Again, not necessarily going back to the pagan um, uh, aspects of it, but but even you you started by talking about the Reformation. The Reformation was breaking um, apart from and away from the Catholic Church and all of the abuses and all of the awful things about the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. And to observe Lent would really be to say, no, I'm partnering with that, and I am part of that right now. And listen. Uh, we could have a whole nother topic, and we will, and we have, about whether uh, Catholics are our brothers and sisters in, in Christ and, and what that looks like and if that's possible, what the, all that stuff. But the reality of it is there are a lot of things um, that are negative um, to me with Catholic theology, not just mm-hmm. uh, scandals, but theology, mm-hmm. that we as Protestants really ought not have part in. No. Is it fair to say that? Oh, absolutely. Transubstantiation. Uh, well, that's one. Uh, Mary being a co redemptor <laughs> with Christ. Right. I mean, sure. uh, there's the whole uh, there's idea a, that, that after a person dies, that they could um, then decide whether they're going to uh, follow Christ or not through purgatory yeah. and, and having people pray for the for the dead. Infant baptism. All those things. Uh, all those, I mean, lots of different things. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> again, you know, I said, you know, the Reformation happened for a reason. Um, mm-hmm. And, and I know, you know, I mean, es- eschatologically, you know, eschatology, mm-hmm. um, I don't know what, what, what role uh, Rome has to do with uh, the, the coming, uh, the coming uh, world leader and all that different things. So, I mean, that's, that's a whole nother subject for no, another, another day as well. Mm-hmm. So I, I just want to be, I just don't want to have any dead tradition. I want to have a living relationship with God. Well, and I think that's uh, that's a good way of, of saying it. So, yeah. you know, on this one, we're we're pretty much in agreement. Um, and mm-hmm. Mike talks about the Pope. Yes, that's another. Um, the and the indulgences. indulgences. Oh my goodness, we've talked about the indulgences the last uh, two Sunday nights, <sighs> um, and we actually talked about the Pope this past Sunday night as well. And, um, as we sin. go through First Peter <laughs> and just uh, talking about some of the the problems with Catholic theology. So anyway. Um, I guess that's it for, uh, for, for tonight, you know, and, and, and so those of you listening again, WBTX, we're thankful for you. Those who have been uh, following us all throughout the evening, um, just kind of uh, commenting here and there and, and maybe just listening on the uh, live feed. We are awful thankful for that. That's uh, a real blessing to us. Mm-hmm. And, and so, hey, you know what? We try to make sure that what we say is backed up by Scripture. And if, uh, if you find uh, places where you think we're in error, well, that's – uh, where you comment or, or send us a private message, let us know because we don't want to be guilty of any of that, of course. So. Amen. Any last uh, words, Terrence? Got about 15 seconds uh, for our radio folks, and then we'll say goodbye to everybody else later. Well, no, just uh, when this airs, it'll be time to uh, celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. So Amen. I'm looking forward to that. That's the, the greatest time of the year. Uh, so you guys be blessed. Amen. All right. Uh, Mark, Terrence, and Sam uh, saying uh, goodbye to you. Till next time, Simple Truth Radio. Thank you for listening to Simple Truth. We look forward to bringing you new messages each week. Tune in next week as we hear from Mark Wingfield and Terrence Williams. I don't know. Let's try it again. Oh, man. What are we going to do? 
we're going to call Jarrett Auto Towing. They're here in Grottoes. Their phone number is 540-249-8282. Can you give me that number again? Yeah, it's 540-249-8282. Jarrett Auto Towing is a proud sponsor of Simple Truth Radio. Give them a call at 540-249-8282. All right. Well, folks, hey, listen, you guys have been very faithful in your listening and in your participation. Some good comments we've gotten tonight. Um, you know, I've been kind of going back and forth, uh, um, uh, going back and forth on uh, the video comments and the party comments. This is new to me in the way I'm doing it. So, like, I can see half the comments uh, at one time and then the other half I can't. Now, as I go back over to the party comments, I see several places where John Lucas uh, gave us some scripture. Uh, I did see the Revelation one and, and uh, Ephesians 5, but now there's some others that I think I, I missed, but thank you for doing that. And, uh, um, again, some of you stayed with us the whole time, and what a blessing that's been. And uh, Joey said, my wife did say she thought she saw you, but I did not. I guess you didn't see me at the book fair after all. Wow, well, I don't know. I saw you somewhere. I thought I did. Maybe it wasn't the book fair. Um, I'll have to think about uh, where it is, I thought, but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, hopefully, I'll see you somewhere um, soon. And uh, thank you guys for being with us. Uh, Terrence, any last uh, closing, parting comments? Oh, nothing. It's just been a, it's been a good night as usual. Uh, good discussions. Uh, uh, just walk around. Don't walk in fear. Uh that's right. Coronavirus or who's going to be president or whether your guns are going to be removed or what Amen. laws the good Democrats are coming down with. Uh, we will, we will, God will take care of us through, through whatever is going on. Uh, we can be sure of that. Yeah, that's a good word. Don't fear. We don't uh, have a spirit of fear. Um, we are courageous and bold and that's how we're supposed to live. So, hey, thanks guys. Till next time, Mark, Terrence, Sam, Simple Truth Radio.